exciting for him, isn't it? What a place to start your test career. He's never bowled here before, apart from for the Northern Superchargers in a 100 game. I can tell you tomorrow's atmosphere will be completely different. It must be an absolute thrill for him to know the day before. I think England have done the right thing there to announce their team the day before, to let him know, you know, tomorrow's his test match debut. He's in form bowler. You know, they've, they've gone with him, 35 first-class wickets. He's done it in front of the skipper. I think that'll do him a lot of good. The skipper, Ben Stokes, obviously stood beside him uh, up at Durham. I wish him well. It can be a difficult place to start, and he's going to have to use Broad and Anderson's experience at the two ends here with the slope. And he'd have done it in practice. He'd have bowled at both ends. And he'll need to, like various bowlers in the history of the game, he'll have to work out which is his best end at Lords. Is it a bold selection? Because Overton was obviously in the mix as well. I think it's the, the form selection and with all the other injuries to all other fast bowlers when you've got a young lad who's bowling well taking wickets why wouldn't you go with him especially with a new era a new captain a new coach why not go out there uh, and, and show us what you can do so he's got to enjoy it. he's got to take in the occasion I think it's the right selection I, I'd have been disappointed if Potts wasn't picked actually what have you made of the noises coming out of the England camp since McCullum's appointment? Obviously, not a lot he can do in, in five or six days, but there seems to be a, a more relaxed feel around the place, doesn't there? As always going to be with Brendan McCullum in charge. He's never been an overly stressed cricketer. He always puts a lot of perspective in life and into the game of cricket, really. I think that's made him the cricketer that, that he was and the coach that he is. Um, I think him and Ben Stokes are cut from the same cloth. I think they have the same sort of mindset of let's play positive cricket, but also... You know, I go back to the Stokes innings at Heading League, he's two not out after 66 deliveries. So a little bit the talk of brand and style of cricket worries me a bit because I'm not for brand and style in Test Match cricket. Tomorrow morning might be zipping around. On day five, it might be completely flat. You need two different brands and styles. You need a, a, a load of different brands and styles. So just play the conditions. And it's time we just got to the fundamentals of Test Match cricket that we've been doing wrong, England. Far too often 20 for two, far too often 50 for five, far too many wickets off no balls, far too many drop catches. They're all the big decisions. You've been busy of late, haven't you? Selector, uh, national director, captains. There's so many things going on behind the scenes. The really important stuff of why we're not winning Test Match cricket starts tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. And what about the decision to put Ollie Pope at three and remove Root from three to four? Do you agree with that? Ideally, I'd like Joe Root to bat at three, especially now he's not captain. Generally, your best players, you know, he's, he's arguably the best batter in Test Match cricket. So you're saying you can't do it, but we'll bring someone else to do that difficult job. Uh, he wants to bat four. He would argue that's where he's had his most of his success. So why change it? Um, Ollie Pope is a fine young player. He really is. If anyone's watched Ollie Pope, I think he averages 77 batting for Surrey in first class cricket, albeit at four and five. Um, we wish him well because he is the best of the young batters out there. He really is. Happened to me in 97. I was called up by Bumble and Michael Atherton to bat at three, and I'd never batted at, for three at England before, and I was a bit nervy, and I got some runs. It is, as he himself said, a one-ball difference between batting at three for England or batting at four um, for Surrey, as he does so well at the moment. Anderson and Broad return. Was that an obvious decision given the conditions, their experience here at Lords, and how rare they are to go having been left out in the winter? Yeah, the, the only thing there is obviously it becomes a longer tail then you, you then have to have possibly pots at eight and that's where they miss someone like chris wokes whose record on this ground is phenomenal chris wokes at lords would be my first pick at number eight if not number seven actually he's that much good cricketer but he's not fit he's not available so then you have to have broad and anderson but that leaves you a little bit of a tail, but I like the way, again, the McCullum stokes, the batters get your runs, and if it means Potts coming in at eight and broad at nine or whatever, so be it. We want our best bowlers and we want our best batters. We don't want to fudge just that longer lining up, lining batting lineup that might take away from our bowling lineup. And fair to say the jury's still out on England's opening partnership of Zach Crawley and Alex Lease. They've got this series to prove themselves. Pressure on them? There is, there's always pressure on any position in any test match. You know, tomorrow there's 22 cricketers going out, out there uh, under pressure. And that, that was my point about Brandon's style of cricket. You've got two completely different there. You've got Lees who, Lees who tries to occupy the crease and bat time. And you've got Crawley who tries to take on the opposition and put them 
on the back foot. The job is about getting runs. I'm not fussed about which way you do it. I don't like having three blockers at the top, so I like they've got they've, that combination, but they've got to find a way of getting runs. You know, Zach Crawley has struggled with big, booming drives in Test match cricket. He got out to Saudi like that here last year, and he's got to put that shot away early on because he's got every other shot in the book. He's strong off his legs, he's strong on the pull. He can get runs, but he's just got to be smarter. Opening the batting in England, you have to be smart. And finally, a word on New Zealand. They are the test champions, the world test champions, but they haven't had things all their own way in their summer or the warm-up games here, and they could be without Trent Ball. Yeah, a similar thing happened last time they were here. Bolt was at the IPL, that got cancelled, he went home, he wanted to play here, they saved him for the second test match. It'll be interesting to see whether they'll do exactly the same. They're without Nichols, Williamson's a bit short of runs, um, they're all a little bit short of time in the middle, but we say this about New Zealand at every test match, and they're world test champions, we say it about them at every world event, and they usually turn up in a final, like they did here in that famous 2019 final. Don't underestimate a Kane Williamson side. It will feel really odd for Bender McCullum tomorrow morning. He'll roll out there. And I don't know if you've seen him on practice, but in a test match morning when he sees Williamson on the other side and he's in the England um, gear, it will feel odd for him. We've got a New Zealander leading or coaching us and the opposition are a very, very fine side. I'm looking forward to it. Start of the international summer. Should be a cracking game.